5.8, analyze graphs of polynomial functions, and let's all celebrate that we only have 10 more full days of school. And three half days. Yippee! Okay, and I thought we'd do something a little fun. So when you're done with this video, I want you to go and go to the comments <clears throat> and write where you're going for the Christmas break. We get almost two weeks, I think. Um, just write where you're going. Let's see who's going to the most fun place. So go ahead, comment when you're done. So I'm going to graph this, and I am going to just start with what I see right there. The first thing I see is that this is a negative graph. I also see that I have a zero here, and I have a double root here. The negative doesn't help me unless I know if it's an odd or an even. Okay, So remember, if I multiply this out, it's going to be an x squared. And then if I multiply it by this, the highest exponent I'm going to get is an x cubed, so it's an odd. So I'm going to plot what I know. I know I have, sorry, I know I have a root at negative 2, I have a double root at 1, I know it's a negative odd, which means it's going to end going down here and going up here. I know I have a y-intercept, so I'm going to FOIL that out to find what my y-intercept is. After FOILing that out, I find out that my y-intercept is negative 2. So I know this is going to come down here somewhere, come back up through negative 2, and then hit my double root and go down. The question is, where is that? Okay, so we're going to learn a couple new terms here. The first new term you're going to learn is that is a local minimum. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's not called the absolute minimum because my graph still is continuing to go south, but it is called a local minimum, which means that this guy would be a local maximum. And I can calculate these on my calculator, so I'm going to pause and calculate that on my calculator by doing um, second trace a minimum. And this point actually ends up being negative 1, negative 4. Okay, so it really should dip down here further. It should go through this point right here. Um, and there would be my graph. Okay, from this I see that it's a positive odd which means I know it's going to end down this way and end up this way to the right. I know I have a y-intercept at 0, 6. Okay, I can't factor it. I can't quadratic formula it. So I put it in my calculator, and I don't even have a 0 that I can synthetic divide with. So I'm now just going to calculate the x-intercept. Using second trace the zero, I find that I have one at negative 1.196. That's a pure guesstimate. I'm going to calculate the maximum. And that point actually does end up being the maximum. And I'm also going to calculate the minimum. There happens to be a minimum at 2, 2, which would be right about here. So now I know that my polynomial comes up through here, hits the max, comes down, and finishes going up there. And that would be the graph. So now we're going to talk about turns, turning points. Um, we turn every time we hit a local max or a local min, and the first rule is the graph of every polynomial function of degree n has at most n minus 1 turning points. OK, 
Okay, the second one is if the polynomial function has n distinct real, which means it touches the x-axis, zeros, the graph has exactly n minus 1 turning points. So for a quick example, if I had a function x squared minus 6x plus 7, I know that factors and gives me, uh, no it doesn't, I want this to be 8. Okay, I know this gives me two distinct real zeros, which means I'm dealing with number 2. So this function has n, which is my degree, n minus 1, which is 2 minus 1 turns. Exactly. Okay. As another example, if I have the polynomial x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 3x squared plus 10x minus 3, I have no idea if it will factor if there is one and I can set the pathetic divide down so I know at most it has 4 minus 1 3 turns at most okay terms yeah bad sorry this is a really appropriate word problem to see how the maxes and the zeros of uh, polynomial functions will will help. So I'm making a rectangular box out of 16 by 20 inch piece of cardboard and the box will be formed by making cuts like you can see in the picture. I want to have the biggest volume I can possibly get. How long should I make the cuts? What's the maximum volume and what will the dimensions? So obviously I need to know what volume of a prism is, so volume of a prism is length times width times height. And on this box, here's my length, and that will be 20 minus 2x. This is my width, and that's going to be 16 minus 2x. And my height is just the x right there. So if I do this, volume is going to equal length times width times height. And on word problems like this, we always give you a calculator. So what I want you to do is I want you to put this in y equals and get an appropriate graph and pause while you do that. So here's the graph of that. It stretched out, uh, the y max is 500 and the x max is 15. And you can see um, that I have a local max, which would be right here. And I'm going to calculate that. So I'm going to calculate that, and that becomes 2.94. Well, let me round to 3. 2.944. and 420.110. Okay, so now you have to ask yourself, what does X stand for and what does Y stand for? Well, in the picture, if you remember, X is the amount that I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut these corners to 2.94. Then it asks me, with that cut, what would the maximum volume be? Well, this right here is my maximum volume. And then the last thing is, what would the dimensions be? So I know 1 is 20 minus 2x, 
and that's going to equal so 20 minus 2x is going to be 14.11 and I made a mistake over here this should really be 2.945 and then 16 minus 2x is going to be my width which is going to be 10 point and then my height is just the 2.945